Bubble Bobble was released in the arcades by Taito in 1986. The game starred twin Bubble Dragons, Bub and Bob, in their very own action platform game, in which the two travel through 100 different stages, blowing and bursting bubbles, dodging enemies and collecting a variety of items. The main goal of the game is to rescue Bub and Bob's girlfriends from the Cave of Monsters. This is an early example of a game with multiple endings, which depend on the player's performance and discovery of secrets. The BBC Micro was a series of home computers that were funded by the British Broadcasting Corporation and built by Acorn. They were hugely popular in the UK and used in every school around the country from the mid 80s. As you can see from this unreleased version of Bubble Bobble, the system was pretty basic but had better colour handling than the likes of the ZX Spectrum. This version was never released due to it being developed near the end of the BBC Micro's life. Bubble Bobble Revolution features two versions of Bubble Bobble. First we have the classic version, which is a pretty good port of the arcade game. The handling is pretty good and there's two player support over Wi-Fi. Thank <laughs> you. 
we go with the new age version, also on the same pack. As you'd expect, it's not very good. The controls don't feel as tight and the scrolling stage ruins that tight feeling that the original had. I don't care much for the enemy design either. completely different Bubble Bobble release now with Bubble Bobble Double Shot. This time we have a proper update to the original game. In this version, the play field is spread across both DS screens which works really well. The graphics are nice and the game plays well. This is the version of Bubble Bobble you want for your DS for sure. Bubble Bobble on the Famicom isn't too bad. Good use of colour and tight controls make this a great version to play. Looking much sharper than the Famicom version, 
This Master System port also adds to the graphical delight with slightly more detailed sprites. The game also plays pretty well, and just like the Famicom version, is 2 player compatible. It should also be noted that Sega ported this version themselves, adding in another 100 levels, giving the game a total of 200 levels. The Game Gear port is basically a cut down version of the Mass System game. Everything looks a little too big due to the Game Gear's screen resolution, but the game plays well enough for the most part. Super Bubble Bubble MD is an unlicensed game, as you can probably tell, due to having Doraemon as a playable character. For an unlicensed game, this is actually pretty good. The graphics and sound could pass as an official game. It even plays well, unlike most unofficial rubbish from China. The biggest fall with this game though, is that it doesn't follow the arcade in the slightest. <laughs>
Bubble Bobble Old and New is another twin cartridge game. First, let's take a look at the old version. This is basically a port of the original arcade game, but now with added scrolling to the stages, due to the resolution of the Game Boy Advance screen. Not a bad game, but not the best port out there. The new version is basically the same as the old version, but now with a new coat of paint and enhanced audio. It's not too bad to be honest, far better than the rubbish Bubble Bobble Revolution on the Nintendo DS. The Game Boy Color version has opted to go for an original game based upon the gameplay style of Bubble Bobble, rather than just a straight arcade conversion. This would be fine if the game played well, but it doesn't. The controls feel sluggish and the jumps have even less gravity than the normal game.
Coming on the same disc as Rainbow Islands, this port is basically arcade perfect. There's not much more to say really apart from it's also on the Saturn. That version has slightly faster loading times, but apart from this, it's the same game. Every single version of Bubble Bobble up to this point in the video has used two buttons. One for jump and one for the bubbles. I guess you can guess how many this version uses. Yep, just one. To jump you push up which can be a little fiddly at first but works well enough. This version is a little clunky in places but overall plays a good game of Bubble Bobble. The Atari ST version is just the same as the Amiga version, and like the Amiga version, it has a limited amount of bubbles you can fire at one time. All other versions let you shoot off a load of bubbles, but this and the Amiga make you wait a second after each bubble, quite annoying really.
This X68000 port is basically the same as the arcade machine in terms of looks and graphics. It also has a special set of options that can turn the game from plain old bubble bubble into super bubble bubble. Now you have different looking enemies, faster gameplay and enemies that fire back at you early in the game. Japanese home computer gamers were so much better off than us in the West. We had the Amiga and ST, while they had the X68000 and the FM Towns. Just like the X68000 port, this FM Towns port has an option screen to change the game into Super Bubble Bubble. Only this time round, we get an arranged soundtrack to go with it. Ears. While the MS-DOS version looks good enough, it sounds awful. Still, at least it plays pretty well. Surprisingly, there's even a version of Bubble Bubble for the Apple II. This is as basic as we can get. The Apple II can't seem to handle all the sprites, causing them to flicker or randomly appear on the screen. Still, at least we can tell it's Bubble Bubble.
Commodore 64 owners can be very happy in knowing that their version of Bubble Bubble is far more playable than any of the European home computer ports. And yes, that does include the Amiga and ST. The official released version of Bubble Bobble for the Amstrad CPC is awful. It's as if the developers want to pull the machine down like so many developers of CPC games. Truly shocking gameplay, no music and poor graphics.
There's also a homebrew version of Bubble Bubble for the Amstrad CPC, which is so much better than the official release. This time we have background music, better graphics, and a game that actually plays really well. Far better than the rubbish that was officially released. Oh, and this version also uses two buttons, unlike every official Yoro home computer port. No pushing up to jump in this version. I'm guessing Taito thought the original Game Boy couldn't display the whole screens of Bubble Bubble, so they went ahead and made some sort of arranged game. It's not too bad to be honest, however it isn't as good as the original game it's loosely based upon. <laughs> There was going to be a port to the Atari Lynx, but as you can see, it never got very far into development. Surprisingly, the MSX port isn't that bad. It's on par with the likes of the Mass System and the Famicom, plus it's a million times better than the official Amstrad CPC and the Spectrum versions. Best of all, it uses two buttons, one for jump and the other for the bubbles.
One of the legendary Fallen brothers, Tim Fallen, developed this port for the Spectrum. I guess it was a bad time for him, as the music is terrible as are the graphics and the way the game plays. Not a good port at all. Finally, we reached the end of our Bubble Bubble Battle of the Ports with the Sega Saturn release. Just like the PlayStation version, this comes with Rainbow Islands and is pretty much arcade perfect for the most part. I think I've covered all of the ports in this show, apart from the mobile phone versions that were released in Japan, and the Famicom Disk System and the emulated ports featured on title game collections. But as regular viewers of RetroCore know, we don't normally include emulated ports. In a cloak, Bub and Bob begin an epic quest, and it's no freaking joke. Bubble, Bubble. 